Could you please explain what typically happens if library offers blanket agreements to its clients? This is a really good topic. How does that impact the composer? All right, I am so glad that you asked that. Um, oh, I didn't finish answering that guy's letter. I'll go back to it in a moment. Um, this is, is an issue. So let's say that a library signs 5,000 pieces of music non-exclusively. Um, and now they do a blanket. A blanket means, a blanket deal is when a library says to a show, and again, I'm going to say the Kardashians just because it's my favorite reference point, but let's say a reality show like the Kardashians cuts a deal with the library that we can use Michael's Music Library, which is non-exclusive and has 5,000 instrumental cues in it. Michael's going to give that bucket of music uh, in digital form over to the uh, music supervisor on the Kardashians. The music supervisor is going to go through the 5,000 tracks and pick out 2,800 that sound like they would be right for Kardashian episodes. They're going to break that out into files of like tension cues, dramedy music, um, sad music, um, mysterious music, whatever the different folders and categories are. Then they put it into an electronic bucket that is called an editor's bin. And basically, editors sit at a workstation, whether they're working from home online or whether they're sitting in, you know, in cubicles uh, or edit bays somewhere, and they get to what's called a beat, which means part of a scene. And let's say that this beat is um, somebody falling down a flight of stairs. Okay, somebody stands at the top of the stairs and says, hey, and they go, whoop, and they go, beep, 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 head over heels down the stairs. And for that, you need a comedic cue. So the editor would then go into the comedic music folder, and they would start looking at the titles of this music, and they would pick one based on the title, probably, because it kind of telegraphs that it's, you know, like if you saw a cue called tumbling, you might listen to that one first and they will sit there on audition cues maybe just like two seconds three seconds go nope not the right vibe not the right vibe oh this one's got potential they play it against picture nah, not that good it's okay i'll keep it on the side for a minute another one now another one now oh this one let's check it out oh look at that works great uh they move it around they chop it uh, they put it in it's great they move on to the next beat or the next scene so if that library did a blanket deal, which is an all-you-can-eat, let's say that they pay $10,000 um, to the library owners, to Michael's Music Library, they give me a check for $10,000. That means they can use as much as they want all season long for that amount of money. Some libraries will insist that all that music ends up on a cue sheet and therefore... Um, the writers still get paid, even though um, they don't get, uh, some libraries don't give you guys any piece of that $10,000 lump sum, all you can eat payment they got. The reason is the libraries who use that business practice will tell you that it's just too hard to figure out what the proportions are. And I can understand that to some degree, but it's still not a great deal in my opinion. Um, let's say that they use Greg Carose's cue for 12 seconds. And let's say that they use Mark Reel's cue for 46 seconds. And then let's say that they use Dan Weber's cue three times in an episode. The first time it was for four seconds. Second time it's for 19 seconds. The third time it was for a minute and 12 seconds. So how does that library then calculate the proportionate amount of the $10,000 lump sum, because you would have to do that for every episode, for a whole season, for every one of those cues. That's a lot of work. By the time they've done all that work, they're like, oh, this is way too much work. Um, so basically what they do is they take the 10K and you guys don't see a penny of it. But the music should, in fact, make it to a cue sheet. So you are at least getting the back end. Um, from your PRO. Now, I've heard examples where libraries have done, um, you got to watch out for the, you know, some of the royalty free or some of, just underline the word some of. Don't take this as a blanket statement about all of them, but there are some less good, less professional libraries out there um, 
that might do a buyout deal with you and say, here you go, 50 bucks. And I get all the rights to that little queue and you go, what the hell? I made 50 bucks for, you know, a couple hours worth of work. Sure, take it. Um, it could go into one of those deals where it ends up being in a bunch of episodes of TV. But because it was that kind of buyout royalty free thing, it may not make it. It may not be required to go to a queue sheet. Therefore, you get zip. Um, Again, all these things have variables. They all have varying degrees. I mean, I'm not telling you anything false, but somebody will say, well, I heard about it, blah, blah, blah. And that's true. It's like many of thing, these things can happen.